You know, in this day and age, we are so obsessed with information, and so, man, so much of it just contradicts the other. And we're told by the media on how we should believe and what we should be afraid of and how we should view ourselves. And we're bombarded every day with these ideas. And if you can't explain everything with its utmost reasoning, uh, then it should just be uh, dismissed as silliness and nonsense. Um, but for this video, I just want you to, because uh, I know a lot of my videos can seem very uh, thought-provoking. You might have to listen to them over and over again. And I do the same with Neville. I reread his stuff all the time. But I want to take a different approach with this video. And I just want this video to be as simple and as honest as it can be. And that is the most important thing you can do in this video. Is I'm going to ask a series of questions and just answer them, not from your perspective, but from God's perspective. And the, the most important thing here is honesty. Because in this world, there are so many gods that are external to us. We're taught to believe in this God, and this God does this thing, and this God does that thing. and <laughs> They're all in conflict with each other because they're all from different times, and they all can't get along. But I want us to just take our focus off of these external gods and just simply focus on the God within, the God inside of us. I want us to become curious about this God. I want you to take yourself out of these questions, this ego that's been developed through all these beliefs about yourself given to you by this external world, by the world of Caesar, bombarded daily with beliefs you're supposed to believe and who you're supposed to fear. Just allow yourself which God you're supposed to pray to. Allow yourself to just let these go by the wayside. Allow yourself to just drop them. Because what you hold on to in the mind, you can let go of in the mind. And when you answer these questions, you could be as simple as, no, God wouldn't, or no, God wouldn't be afraid of that. And that's good enough. You don't need to add anything more. And I suggest you don't. Just leave it from God's perspective. And don't allow yourself to get in the way. And when you do that, you'll notice an ease and a fearlessness and a power come up within you. And don't allow yourself to be afraid of it. It's not going to hurt you. Allow yourself to enjoy it. Similar to like when a good speaker is on stage and he's able to speak to an audience and the audience can get an emotional reaction. If he's good, he can do this. The same is true here. That when you start to see God's perspective and how powerful and fearless it is, allow it to penetrate you and allow yourself to be overcome with those emotions as well. And then you'll see how one you are with this marvelous being inside you. How you two are one, that all that's his is yours. That his strength becomes your strength. His boldness becomes your boldness. His fearlessness becomes your fearlessness. So, as I said before, just answer these questions honestly. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the minutiae of everything. Just answer them. And remove all these ideas of what you thought God was. And just simply ask. Ask yourself these questions. Would God fear what I am fearing right now? Would God feel stuck like I am feeling stuck? Would God allow himself to feel all the pleasures he desires? Would God question his worthiness? Would God ask for man's permission? Would God seek man's approval? Would God seek anything at all? Would God lack anything? Would God listen to doubts? Would God be a slave to the senses? Would God be entirely graceful and giving? Would God hate or fear anyone? Would God believe in himself? Would God fear death? Would God love endlessly?
And when you ask yourself these questions and you answer them honestly, of course God would never question his worthiness. And you don't add anything to it, just his standpoint, just his perspective. You'll see that it's your perspective. You'll see how one you are with this being. That you don't have to fear anything because he doesn't fear anything. It's good enough reason. And who's greater than God? You can't go to some holy man to forgive you anymore. You have to go to this being, and this being is the utmost of love there is. It's the most powerful being there is. And it's love. If you don't want to use the word God, if that has too much baggage, use love. Would love question their worthiness? No, love wouldn't do that. So you don't have to um, use the word God if it's too triggering. But, and I can sympathize with that. The word has been used in all sorts of um, justifications, which uh, William Blake says is the uh, language of hell, is self-justification, justifying why we're still in sin, justifying why we're still afraid, justifying why I still seek approval. All these justifications to remain as I am. But we're taught to imitate God in all that we do. What I have to ask myself, would God be like this? Would God be the way I am? If not, then I want to find out how he would be so I can imitate him. And he calls the things that are unseen as though they were seen. So I imitate that being. He's the ultimate being. I can't go to anyone else. And that's the point that Neville's trying to make. Is that your foundation stone must be the imagination. Something inside you. Not these gods that you have to bow before and show reverence to. When, because it's a symbol of what they represent. This wood symbol. So again, when you answer these questions, take yourself out of it. Don't try to reason with it or figure it out. Allow the answer to come up and be honest. You know God wouldn't fear what you're fearing. You just know it. You don't need someone on the outside to tell you that he doesn't. You don't need permission from them. You don't need their validation to know you're right. You know you're right that he wouldn't. And like I said, you'll start to see how one you are with this being. There doesn't have to be any anything more added to it. It's a simple meditation. It takes five minutes. And you'll find the ease and the comfort coming. And again, allow yourself to feel those to their depths. For a long time, I thought good feelings were things that could hurt me in the future. And I was so wrong that you have to allow yourself to feel these good feelings because it's, as Neville says, it's self-demotion or self-promotion. It's one or the other. So I can remain as I am and keep feeling after the things I'm feeling after, feeling afraid, or I can imitate this being called God and how I perceive them. And if God's love, I can't see love being afraid of anything. It's powerful. Love is the most powerful thing there is. And we're taught that that's God. So learn to not be so scared inside yourself. Start to imitate that being inside yourself. And you'll see you're one. So I'm sure this will help you because this has helped me tremendously in my journey. I've been able to become more relaxed more at ease, more mimicking the being that I actually want to mimic. I'm tired of mimicking other men. I want to mimic something extraordinary. But in order to mimic that, I must know how this being is. And this being we call God is fearless. It's powerful. It's loving. It does everything in love. It doesn't use and abuse for its own selfish gain. It wants to grow everything. So again, Go through these questions and ask yourself them and see what feelings arise and accept those feelings fully. So I know this will help you.